let's discuss another question from gate 2009 so consider steady state heat conduction so basically a composite slab is given here so I'm just writing down the question heat conduction across the thickness in a plane composite wall figure is given exposed to convection conditions on both sides so you have convection conditions on both sides okay and you want basically the so let's see what we want but let's let's first draw the figure okay so let me just draw the figure what he has given so it's a composite wall of made of two materials one and two and you have convective coefficient here hi so two things are important the ambient temperature and the heat transfer coefficient on each side of the convection here so inside it is denoted by i outside it is denoted by o it's up it's o so you have convection on both sides and this is of length l1 and l2 okay so given h1 is 20 watt per meter square kelvin h0 is 50 watt per meter square kelvin t infinity i is 20 degrees celsius t infinity o is 20 is minus 2 degrees celsius and k1 is 20 watt per meter kelvin k2 is 50 watt per meter kelvin l1 is 0.3 and l2 is 0.15 meters assuming negligible heat assuming negligible contact resistance between the wall surfaces the interface temperatures okay the interface temperatures t in degrees celsius of the two walls will be so the interface temperatures are asked okay so now so okay so let's 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 see these are standard type of problems let's see how to solve them you have convection on both sides hi ti1 ho t not o and this is 1 and 2 so these kind of problems it's always better to draw a resistance network and put up all the conduction resistance and the convection resistance so let's start with this or before starting let me let me just uh, understand in this way whenever you have a heat conduction that is taking place between a plane wall it is written as k a delta t by l you have a single wall this is a length l area of cross section is a delta t is the temperature difference across so this is how it runs so this heat transfer in a steady state so what we will do is we write delta t and this as l by k and this l by k i call as conduction resistance because higher that is lesser will be the heat transfer for a given delta t okay so this is this is how i define the conduction resistance which is l by k and if i have the convection resistance let's say the heat is getting lost from a plane wall by conduction resistance so that is the heat transfer formula for that is given as ha the base temperature minus the ambient temperature so this also it is so tb minus t infinity again i call as delta t as 1 by ha so this 1 by ha is again uh, i mean you know it as convective resistance so this is delta t by r convection as q so delta t by r convection okay so this is how i denote steady state heat transfer 
in conduction as delta T by R where R is L by K and for heat conversion I denote delta T by R conversion where it is 1 by H. So now given network diagram I try to I'll draw in terms of temperatures and resistance. So initial temperature is T infinity I and then you have a convective resistance till this wall surface. So that is 1 by H I A. A is the area the the perpendicular cross sectional area along which the heat is flowing one so now heat has to flow through conduction so it is convective resistance and then it is again convective resistance so this is one l1 by k1a and this is l2 by k2a and then after that it is one by h0 a and then it is t infinity o so the temperature difference is t infinity i minus t infinity o and there are four resistances two being the conductive resistance and the two being the convective resistance each on either side so this is the resistance diagram so what we want is we want the interface temperature here so let that be temperature t so there are many ways of doing it first calculate the effective q and then use only left side of the interface temp or right side and then do it what we will do is because it's a series network the amount of heat that is flowing from t infinity i to t is same as the amount of heat that is flowing from interface t to t infinity o so we just equate the amount of heat and how do i write the amount of heat that is flowing on the left of is t the temperature difference from t infinity to interface by the total resistance because the series network 1 by hia plus l1 by k a k1 by a. so this is the heat that is flowing through left and the heat that is flowing through right is t because it's flowing from here t minus t infinity o by the total resistance because the series net resistance i am just adding up 1 by h naught a so when i equate these two i can get the interface temperature that is the basic idea So this is L1 by K1 plus L2 by, by H naught A. Now A being common throughout, I can just cancel out. And T infinity, so let's now put up the temperature values. So A I can just cancel out and rest is all substitution. So T infinity is 20 minus T by 1 by H1. 1 by H1 is 20 plus L1 is 0.3 by your 20. A, I'm just cancelling out T is T minus of minus 2 by 0 0.15 is my L2 by K is 50, K2 is 50 by A, I'm cancelling out and 1 by H0 is again 50. So this I need to just simplify. So this when I simplify, I get 20 minus T is 2.826 T plus 2 and this when I calculate. I get 20 minus T as 2.8260 plus 5.6521 and when I simplify further I get T as 3.75 degrees Celsius. So the interface temperature is 3.75. The answer for this is C. Okay. So these are another standard kind of problems where everything will everything what you want can be derived, can be it will be clear when you draw a resistance. So in these kind of problems, composite wall, I urge you to draw a resistance network, and put up all the values and then you can get the desired answer. So that is it. So let's now discuss further questions. So let's uh, discuss question number 28 from gate 2009 only so what is given is in a parallel flow heat exchanger so I'm just writing on the question so in a parallel flow heat exchanger operating under steady state the heat capacity 
rates which is product of specific heat a constant pressure and the mass flow rate so that is nothing but your specific heat and the mass flow rate product which is mass flow rate product and that is equal that is what is given of the hot and the cold so this is a problem on the heat exchanger fluid are equal okay the hot fluid flowing at 1 kg per second and with cp 4 kilojoules per kg kelvin so this is just given to calculate the specific heat cap i mean the heat capacity rate so this enters the heat exchanger at 102 degrees celsius while the cold fluid enters at 15 degrees celsius so the overall heat transfer coefficient the overall which is denoted by u so that is given as overall heat transfer coefficient for the heat exchanger is estimated to be 1 watt per meter square Kelvin and the corresponding heat transfer area is 5 meter square neglect heat transfer so we are asked to neglect the heat transfer between heat exchanger and the ambient and the heat exchanger the heat exchanger is characterized by the following relation 1 minus exponential minus uh, 2NTU okay so NTU is something which is not given which you should know guys so the exit temperature in degree celsius for the cold fluid is okay so what is asked is the cold fluid temperature so it's 45 55 65 and 75 okay so this is a problem on heat exchanger and as i already told in one of the previous gate problem that there are two methods broadly to solve any heat exchanger problem the lmtd method the log mean temperature difference method and the other method being the NTU method and that is what is given so there is a relation that is given the effectiveness is 1 minus 2 NTU uh, one more important point which I would like to tell you is this the NTU method is mostly used when only the inlet and the inlet temperature for both the hot and the cold fluid is known outlet I don't know and that is quite physical also because quite practical also because outlet temperatures when you are just designing how do you know I mean, you don't have anything you don't have an apparatus you don't have an instrument you just want to design and then how do you know you can you just know the inlet temperatures of the both hot and the cold fluid okay so this is NTU method is quite practical so let's first see what are the parameters effectiveness is defined as the actual heat transfer by max possible heat transfer okay and by some arguments i can show that the max possible i mean the actual is actual the max possible is the mean heat capacity into the inlet temperatures of the hot the difference of the inlet temperatures for the hot and the cold fluid so that is how the effectiveness relation is that is how the effectiveness for a heat exchanger is defined okay and what is ntu ntu is u a by c mean where u is your overall heat transfer coefficient
okay so let's first get the value of effectiveness because i think everything else is known overall your transfer coefficient is given as one and the corresponding is given as area is five and c mean because everything is same so c mean or c mats heat capacities are same that is nothing but mass flow rate for the hot into cp for the hot mass flow rate is one and cp is four kilojoules so 10 power three so four or let's write 4 kilojoules per Kelvin second okay so u is given as 1 a is given as 5 uh, I'm sorry u is given as 1 kilowatt that's a mistake from my side 1 kilowatt so 1 kilowatt let's write 1 kilowatt per meter square Kelvin area is given as 5 and this c mean is 4 kilojoules per second so this value is basically 5 by 4 and when i substitute that in this formula i get it's known as 1 by 2 1 minus e power exponential minus 2 into 5 by 4 so this value when i calculate it comes closer this value when i calculate it comes about 0.4589 so this is the effectiveness value so now now let's let's plot it so this is a parallel flow heat exchanger i know that the outlet enters at the hot fluid enters at 102 the cold fluid enters at 50 the hot fluid will come down the cold temperature will increase okay and the initial temperatures i know so the actual heat transfer so from the cold some uh, from the hot some heat is going into the cold okay so the what we are interested in the exit temperature for the cold so let's so so the actual heat heat i can write as the heat capacity for the cold into the outlet temperature of the cold minus the inlet temperature of the cold inlet temperature i know outlet is what i want so if i substitute this in the effectiveness I get CC is TCO outlet temperature the difference of the outlet and the inlet temperature of the cold by C mean into the inlet temperature difference okay so as I know the, the heat capacities are same so cold and the C mean all are all same so the cold outlet temperature is what I need to know inlet temperature is 15 by inlet for the hot is 1 or 2 and inlet for the cold is 15 and effectiveness value is 0.4589 so this TCO which is the temperature difference for the cold outlet so this value comes out closer to 55 when I calculate so so that is so these and now I can I mean though it is not asked so I can also calculate let's say the exit temperature for the hot fluid also by just writing the actual heat transfer for the hot fluid and the denominator remains same for the effectiveness the effectiveness value have already calculated so this method works on calculating first the effectiveness and then calculating either whichever outlet temperature is required because the actual heat transfer if if i if you require the outlet temperature for cold write down the actual heat transfer for the cold and that will involve the outlet temperature for the cold if you want the inlet if you want the outlet temperature for the hot write down the actual heat transfer for the hot and the denominator you already know the inlet temperatures the inlet temperatures are to be known and effectiveness is calculated from this MPU. so these expressions are derived by are, are will be given I mean, when you are solving you get problem these expressions will be given and these can be derived by long derivations okay so the answer for this is p 55 thank you